Positioning is the most crucial aspect of anyone's game in Rainbow Six Siege, and I can guarantee you're doing it wrong. That's right, even if you're champ, I guarantee you're doing it wrong. That's why in today's video, I will be breaking down the three types of positioning in Siege and how to do them correctly. The first type of positioning is the positioning on the map. This is commonly referred to as map control, and is really only applicable to roamers off-site and attackers in the first half of the round. This type of positioning is where you are playing on the map, so where you are actually playing the room that you are in, the area that you are playing on the map. That is this type of positioning. On defense as a roamer, this could be top floor theme park when the site is first floor, or in showers on Oregon when the site is basement. This is your position on the map, and this is your piece of map control. On attack, this could be doing a top-down clear or a horizontal clear. Think cafe when you're doing from top to bottom when the site is bakery, or on villa if you're doing study over if site is master. This is what I'm talking about when it's map positioning. This is your positioning on the map. And this is also by far the simplest form of positioning. It is the very foundation in which Siege is built on, which is map control. The next type of positioning is much more abstract and something that you are 100% doing wrong, and that's situational positioning. Situational positioning is the actual location you are playing in the very moment. This is more applicable for anchors on defense and attackers when they are executing onto site. Later in the video, I will be breaking down this type of positioning because like I said, I guarantee you're doing it wrong. The best way to think about this type of positioning is to ask yourself, where would I sit and where would I play when taking a gunfight? The reason to ask yourself this question is, well, whatever the answer is, that's actually probably where you should be playing in that very moment, in that situation. And that's why this positioning is often misunderstood, is because many people don't understand that the situation changes moment to moment, and therefore you need to change where you are sitting in that position moment to moment. That's why it is situational position. It is your position based on the situation. The third form of positioning is the most crucial form of positioning, and that's the position when you are in a gunfight. Sometimes the difference in the way you lean is life or death, and that decision can win or lose an entire game. Later in the video, I will teach you some of the easiest ways to understand and master this type of positioning, but first, let me give you an example. Let's say you're on cafe defending bakery. You couldn't peek the same angle over and over and over again, right? So as a defender, you want to peek in a different area so you put yourself in the best position to win a gunfight and to deny an area from the attackers. This is how you position yourself in gunfights. And did I mention all three types of positioning go hand in hand? That's right, they do. Let me explain. You always start with map positioning or where on the map you are playing or pushing. Then you transition into situational positioning, like where are you going to sit when you take a gunfight? What corner you're going to sit? How are you going to lean? Where, like what actual area are you playing when they're pushing? How are you going to position yourself for the best case scenario? And then the third type of positioning happens after the situational awareness kicks in. And that's, okay, when I'm taking a gunfight, how am I positioning myself in that gunfight? Am I going to take it standing? Am I going to take it crouching? Am I going to take it prone? Do I need to pre-aim prone? Do I need to pre-aim because the, the guy's boosted on something? That is your gunfight positioning. You're positioning in a gunfight. And these all come together into this mash of crescendo, this symphony of movement and positioning and map control. It all comes together. Even pros get this wrong. Most pros think there's one type of positioning, but in reality, there's these three different types of positioning that all go hand in hand in a symbiotic relationship to be together. And that is positioning in Rainbow Six Siege. There's not one type, but there are three types that go hand in hand that change from moment to moment to moment. And you need to understand how to master all of them. That's why we'll be breaking down some examples right now. So I'm about to break down what situational positioning is because a lot of people get this one wrong specifically. And if you want to see me hit clips just like this one, you can check me out live at twitch.tv forward slash vexian where i'm live every day getting you guys copper champ games series coming soon starting off let's explain the situation now i use this in my how to anchor video because it's actually a pretty good anchor clip but more so it's a great positioning clip so i'm gonna skip all the way ahead before i win so i can break down what my good situation positioning is here so here's what's going on. Here is the situation. It is a 1v3 with 40 seconds left on the clock. So in this situation, this situation that I'm in, I'm going to position myself hard right of the door. This is the area of the map I'm playing. This is the situation I'm playing. They're going to push in. And because I know they're going to push in, I'm going to try to isolate myself in this situation to take one-on-one -on -one gunfights. That way, this is the position I'm playing in the situation. And when I'm taking these gunfights, I'm taking them advantageously. I'm going to play the clip out. I'm going to show you how it goes. So as you can see there, because I was positioned on the door, I was positioned in that corner, I was actually able to pick up two people because I knew they did not have the information that I was there. And information is a key part of positioning. You actually have to have pretty good game sense and pretty good information to know if they know they have information, right? To know if they know you are there. 
So that's actually a crucial part that a lot of people forget when they're talking about positioning is that positioning is really reliant on information. So information is actually almost equally as important as positioning, but the positioning is based on information or their lack for of information in some cases. So because I knew they lacked information in that situation, I could position myself in such a way that I could take advantageous gunfights. And then I'm able to close out this round and pick up the win. This is what I mean by situational positioning. A lot of people miss this part out because they don't actually get it. So when you understand where on the map you're playing, then you can like in, in a situation play in spots like that, in corners like that, and position yourself in an, an advantageous way to win gunfights. Now I'm gonna go in game and show you how to actually properly take gunfights and how to position yourself during a gunfight to win it. Let's break that down because a, a lot of people get that wrong too. I don't know why, but it's crucial. And the reason why I'm not showing you map positioning is because I, I can assume you guys know how to play. And if you want to know how to play like actually good positioning on a map, check out this video in the top right corner where I, where I talk about how to roam. And that really does kind of explain how to actually position yourself on the map. And well, this video is talking about how to position yourself in gunfights and how, how to position yourself in situations. All okay, right. So now that we're in game, I'm going to show you some examples of how to position yourself in a gunfight. And the first comes down to kind of a movement technique or just a movement thing in general. When you're peeking, let's say I know the door here is to my left and I want to peek left. You want to lean left always lean the way you are peeking there's never a time where you don't want to do this unless you're quick peeking obviously but for the sake of this video and the sake of most things if i know that i'm going to be swinging left i'm going to lean left if i lean normally and i just walk forward he can actually see me before i see him but if i lean left i actually get an advantage where i can see him at the same time he sees me now there's a second component to this where it's actually the angle in which you're taking the gunfight. So if I swing close off the wall here, he actually is probably going to be able to react more because my face is in the wall. When I, my shoulder's out, he can actually still see me and potentially even shoot me in like the shoulder or something. That's actually bad. If you back up while taking a gunfight, you give a better angle for yourself because there's a longer line of sight when you're moving. So now when I move, I can actually see him this, like basically at the same time you can see me. Now, yes, you are protected when you are close to a wall and you swing out, which can be good and you should take advantage of that if it makes sense but most times when you're taking gunfights you want to swing wide and the reason why you want to swing wide is it's easier for you to pick up a kill if i swing close like i said he can see me before i see him that's not great but if i swing wide i can see him before he sees me now that's really good especially when you have peeker's advantage peeker's advantage basically comes down to the fact that when you're moving you have the advantage when you are peeking into someone holding an angle and if you take that angle wide you have an even stronger advantage if you take it close it actually does give them time to react and see your shoulder now, most times it really doesn't matter in, in the general sense of the thing, because if you're peeking, you're peeking, there's a good chance that you have advantage in the first place. Something else you want to do when taking gunfights and doing things like that is create weird angles. So if I know Blackbeard's on the door here, I could swing him. Maybe I, I, maybe I lose that. Maybe I don't. But I can open this line of sight here and I can take this instead. So if he's expecting me to swing left, I can use my positioning to swing right and lean right and shoot him like that. This is another strong thing that most people don't do. They don't create multiple opportunities for themselves to win gunfights. And this is where positioning comes in key. I know where he is, I can go left, or I can use my, my utility to open an angle and swing right. And that's situational positioning coming in handy while taking a gunfight. And now I have two options and I'm gonna swing right here because he's not expecting it because he's still holding the default rotate there. And that is the key of gunfight positioning. Now, there's actually another type of positioning that I'll show you right now. The next part about gunfight positioning and situational positioning is going to come in handy when you are a defending or just in general. Be weird. I know for a fact that if I'm standing right here and he swings from cool vibes and we're both at head level, we are both have a 50-50 to shoot each other in the head. Whereas if I'm elevator and he's cool vibes and he swings me, he's going to be aiming at head level and I know where his head is and I can just shoot him. It's actually super advantageous and not enough people do this. If you play in weird angles on defense or attack when swinging or taking a gunfight, you're going to have an advantage in a gunfight. And that is gunfight positioning at hand. You could also do some things like this where you're positioning yourself around the bomb and you like, you know, cover. That way when he swings the door here and he pushes in, I can actually see him before he sees me. He has to see all this palm, he has to see all this debris, but if I have a clear angle on him, that's easy. And even furthermore, if I'm further back, my head is actually gonna be smaller. So when he swings in, I have an easier time to react. I'm even more well kind of covered by the bomb here. And I'm not having to do this weird thing where I'm peeking out behind the bomb, which we talked about earlier, the lever of the angle, how you don't want to necessarily be close on some objects. In some cases, close on this bomb actually would be fine. But back here could also be advantageous if I'm taking this angle right here through this. This is a better angle to take. And this is what you need to do when positioning yourself in a gunfight. Not enough people take, in fact, the surroundings, which way they need to be leaning, which way they need to be moving. These are all things you need to do to win more gunfights. And this is why gunfight positioning is so advantageous. Now, that being said, guys, it's been Vaccine. If you enjoyed this video, hey, subscribe. Check out Alka. He's, uh, he's the guy who's helping me out here. He's also my roommate. His link will be in the description below. And I'll see you guys in the next one.